The Tournament of Champions is finally here. Let's just hope that no more eights appear. On Katja! This is the game where a single turn of the cards can win you up to $32,000 in cash. Now, here's your host, the star of Card Sharks, Brandon Sprung! And hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome in to the Card Sharks Tournament of Champions right here at MVG Productions. Glad to have you with us on this one. These, player, these eight players have battled it out all season long, and now we're going to decide which one of them is going to be our Season 1 champion. And we'll start with this Tournament of Champions, starting with this first quarterfinal matchup. So let's meet our players for that. Starting with our player in the champion spot here, which will be the higher seed of the two players as they were ranked in the Tournament of Champions. Our number four seed for this tournament Whose best, whose best win, our best run here on the show, was four wins and $21,650 in cash. We've got Mr. Eric Lima. Eric, welcome to the Tournament Champion, sir. Hello there, Brandon. How are you doing? How is everyone out there doing? I, I am doing well, sir. You have you decided to make another tournament here on, on my channel? I'm going to see what you do. I won one tournament already on your channel and see if I can... Another one. Well, best of luck to you. You got a tough opponent against here. These are two players who are very close in their runs here. Are playing against Eric, our number five seed in this tournament, whose best runs was four wins and seven thousand two hundred dollars of the money cards. We've got Mr. Brody. Brody, welcome in. Thank you, Brandon. All right, both these players have had some very exciting moments during their runs here card sharks and hopefully you guys are ready to get things underway here this is the first of uh, two quarterfinal games you'll see on this episode of card sharks here and the way it's going to work is like this i'm going to play a normal round best two out of three matchup uh winner winner of the main game will go on to move on to the semifinals. the loser however will get a chance to play the money cards one last time to add some more money to their to their best record here on the show all right, um, and just for everyone making it this far in the tournament, you are guaranteed to get at least a bonus $5,000 for making the tournament. So congratulations to both of you on that. But right. we're going to see which right. one of you is going to advance in the tournament and which one will be playing the money cards on this first part here. So let's get started and let's play some card sharks. All right, cards are already dealt out and you guys know how this works. Again, call your way across the cards. Calling the next card either higher or lower than the previous one. If you could do that, you win a game. Another $250 added to your winnings. And again, it takes two games to win the match and move on to the semifinal round. And of course, as also, always, you got to get control of the cards by answering a survey question. And as always, the first one goes to the champion position. That In this case, it would be Eric. So, Eric, we ask 100 people on this one. Do you like Chinese takeaway? How many of 100 people said yes, they like Chinese takeaway? I think they meant Chinese takeout here. I yeah, think yeah. Chinese takeout. Yeah, well, on occasion, we usually do the Chinese takeout food, in my opinion. But usually, also, we have a local buffet near the uh, near our local mall where I work, and it's like sometimes the family and I go there for special occasion. So, I think it all depends on uh, what kind of family you got. And, of the road number on this one, let's say 55. 55 out of 100 said they enjoy Chinese takeout. Brody, higher or lower than 55? Well, like I said, it depends on uh, who uh, who likes the Chinese uh, takeout uh, more. I personally like Chinese takeout myself. I, I really do love Chinese food. Um, I'm going to say that's going to be uh, lower than that. I'm going to say even lower than that. All right. If its answer is lower, of course, you'll play your cards first. If not, Eric will play his cards first. The actual, the actual number of people that said they do like Chinese takeout is 44. It is lower. Very, very, very close in your answer there. Just off by a little bit. But Brody, with that correct answer, you get the chance to play your cards first. So let's take a look at your base card. Uh, an eight right up the middle. 
Change it. All right, changing that eight. That eight now becomes a two. A deuce. Higher. Higher than the deuce. It's a jack. Lower. Lower than the jack. It's a four. Go higher. Higher than the four. It's a five. Uh, I think I'm going to freeze. Gonna freeze right uh, there. Okay, Not going after the five hundred dollar bonus for this clean sweep, but needing just one more card to secure game number one in this quarterfinal matchup. Let's go on to our second question here. This one goes to Brody. Brody, we asked one hundred people, "Do you believe in ghosts?" How many of a hundred people said yes? They do believe in ghosts. Oh my god! Not a lot of people would believe in ghosts. Unless if you're like a, if you're like, unless if you're like a ghost tracker or a ghost hunter, um, I think that's gonna be a really low number because there's not gonna be a lot of people who would actually believe in ghosts. I'm gonna go with num. I'm gonna go with twenty five. Twenty five out of one hundred said they believe in ghosts. Eric, higher or lower than twenty five? Oh, I, I, uh, I agree with Brody's uh, logic when he likes in ghost hunters and out there. I think there's some crazy people out there as well. So that could be that could play a factor. And who knows what crazy people could be thinking. So a tad bit higher though. A tad bit higher. A little bit higher. All right, we'll see. The actual number of people that said they do believe in ghosts is 42. It is higher. I didn't think it would be that much. Nice. I didn't think that would be much that much higher. All right, Eric, you have a chance to get into this game here, try to take it from Brody. Take a look at your base card. It's a four. Make that card go higher. Higher than the four. It's a ten. Let's risk it. Go lower. Let's get it lower than the ten. It's a seven. Um, let's go with the odds. Go higher. Let's get it on. Higher than the seven. It's a nine. I, I got a two there. I got a freeze there. Freeze in there. Wow. Both players will not be able to play all the way across the board. Only needing one card each to win the first game of this uh, quarterfinal matchup here. Let's go on to question number three. And that one goes to Eric. Eric. Good luck. We asked one of our folks and asked them, do you like the holiday of Christmas? How many of 100 people said yes, they do like the holiday of Christmas? I do believe that will be a very high number because a lot of people love the holidays yeah, the missed families and the presents and all that. I personally like Christmas because, you know, Christmas has not been the same for me for all days. But back in the day, when I loved Christmas the best because you get to go visit a relative's house, a lot of parties and all that. So I'm going to say a relatively high number, 75, I believe. 75 out of 100 said they like Christmas. Brody, higher or lower than 75? I think... Uh... I agree with uh, I agree with Eric there. Um, there's gonna be a lot of people who enjoyed the holiday spirit of, of Christmas, but I think I think it's gonna be even higher than that. So even oh. higher than that. Well, we'll see. The actual number of people that said they do enjoy the Christmas holiday is ninety-one. Wow. 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 I, th I think that is that's like that's accurate. I have to say that's pretty accurate. That's got to be one of the highest answers I think we've had all season here. I'm going to be surprised that the answer was 99. Uh, and well, we're going to we're bound to come across a survey at some point in time that's going to have that in the answer, but we'll see later on down the road. Right now, Brody, you have a five to play with. Um, I'm going to go higher. All right, for game one of the match, higher than a five. It's a 10. He's done it. All right. All right, Brody has the $250 for you. Gives G game one in this uh, quarterfinal tournament matchup. Eric needs his next game to tie it up. So we'll go ahead and clear out the board. Jump right into um, game number two. And this time, the challenger gets the right to start on this one. Brody, this one, first question goes to you. All right. We asked 100 people, do you always forget where you left your keys? How many of 100 people said, yes, they do some they always forget where they left their keys at. Hmm. Depends on the, what kind of keys they're, they're talking about. Like their house keys, their car keys. Some people may have like a short-term memory loss. Or 
Or, or they just like completely forgot where they last uh, had their keys. Mm -hmm. I'm probably gonna say that's gonna be somewhere of a minimal number because there could be some uh, some people out there who would actually remember where they left their keys. I'm gonna say thirty five. Thirty five out of one hundred. All right. Eric, higher or lower than thirty five? How many people will remember where they left their keys? Huh? Now the question is, uh, do they always forget where they left their keys? Uh, always forget. Uh, okay, thirty five is good, good number. I'm sure there's some people out there that have some uh, uh, lapsed memory and all that. But I sometimes forget my keys too. Um, I'm gonna have to uh, thirty five. Uh, feeling it could be a little bit higher than 35. A little bit higher than that. All right. We'll see. The actual number of people that say, they, that do always forget where they left their keys is... Well, is it going to show up? Technology? Yeah, it's not going to... It's. Let me try it again here. Put that there. Put that there. And the answer is... 38, there we go. Uh, well, that was too awesome, I guess. It, it, I it hung up for some reason, but it's okay. We're all set to go, so it is a little higher. So, Eric, that means you get a chance to start this round. You need this one to tie it up. Let's take a look at your base card. It's going to be a 7. I got to change that card. All right, you won the question. You could change it. That 7 now becomes a 6. Oh, okay. I still got to go with the odds higher. Higher than the 6. It's a king. Lower. Lower than the king. It's a five. Go higher. Higher than the five. No, Ooh. it's a four. You lose all the way back That's to the hurt. base card there, giving Brody a free chance to play off his base card of the six. Let's go higher. Higher than six. No, a four. All right. Four got it, Brody, too. Nobody move, advances on this one, so we go on to question number two. This one goes to Eric. Eric, we asked one other people and asked them, do you know what blood type you are? How many of our other people said, yes, they do know what blood type they are? I'm going to that'd be a low number because I don't even know my blood type. Sometimes people, unless you really go to the doctors and find out yourself. So not a lot of people want to go to the doctors. So I am going to say 20. All right, 20 out of 100 said they know their blood type. Brody, higher or lower than twenty? Well, it would obviously depend on what uh, what kind of what kind of blood you have. Um, some people would, like Eric said, it. it, it some people you know, would uh, would have to go to the doctors or just uh, to find out what uh, what kind of blood type they are. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's going to be a bit higher than that. A little higher than that. All right. The actual number of people that said they do know what their blood type is is thirty-two. It is higher. Good job, Brody. All right, Brody in control with the card. You got that six. Mm, I'm going to change it. Change that six. All right, that six now becomes a queen. Oh, that's better. Lower. Lower than the queen. It's a ten. Oh, I don't trust that ten. I I'm going to freeze there. Freezing on the ten. All right, meaning three cards to win the game and the match. Move on now to question number three. This one goes back to Brody. Brody, we asked 100 people. Do you watch the evening news every day? How many of 100 people said yes, they do watch the evening news? Well, if, well they want to ever have like the uh, the updates on uh, on like the weather or the or the traffic. Yeah, that, that that's a, that's a that's a good way to watch the evening news. I mean, I don't uh, I don't uh, I don't get uh, I don't mind to have people watching the evening news because you never know what might happen to like tomorrow or later on in the future. I think that's going to be somewhere of a, of a mid-high number. Probably around 52. 52, all right. 52 out of 100 said they watched the evening news. Eric, higher or lower than 52? Uh, this day and age, you've got the internet, and you can get a lot of news off the internet, obviously. You don't have to worry about turning on TV and watch the evening news. You get all the news on the internet. So I'm going to have to go a little bit lower than that. Say a little lower than that. 
Yeah, I still watch my local news broadcast, but I don't have regular TV at home, so I watch over this live stream on the internet, so I'm kind of somewhere in the middle between both of y'all here in this case. We'll see, the actual number of people here that do watch the evening news broadcast is 48, it's just a little lower. Mm -hmm. A little bit. All right, Eric. Yeah. You're in control. You've got that six. Let's try to change that this time. See if we can improve. All right. See if we can do better than the six. That six now becomes a deuce. Higher. Higher than the deuce. It's a nine. Ooh. Uh, let's risk it and go lower. Risking, trying to keep himself alive. Lower than the nine. Oh no, a king. Ooh. Does you no good. There we go back to the base card for you. Brody, a free shot off the 10. Okay, I'm going to go with the odds and go lower. Lower than the 10. It's a 7. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to freeze on the 7. All right, freezing on the 7 there. Giving you just two more cards to win this round and advance on to the semifinals of our tournament. Eric needs all four cards, and we've come to our fourth and final question of this round. Someone must win on this play of the cards. Question here goes to Eric. Eric, we asked we asked 100 people, do you wish you could write using both hands or being for considering yourself being ambidextrous in this particular case? How many of 100 people said yes, they do wish they could write with both hands? Well, when it comes to, when it comes to writing, I'm, I'm very strong with my right hand. And there's a couple of times I tried to put my left and doesn't work, and let uh, Unless you want to practice, just in case something happens, your right hand gets hurt or something like that. So, I think it helped. It's helped uh, in a few things. Oh, I'm gonna have to go with a low number on that. Um, uh, somebody wishes they write with both hands. Let's try 35. 35 out of 100 said they wish they could write with both hands. Brody, higher, lower than 35. Yeah, well, we're being ambidextrous while we're trying, we're writing with both hands. I, I don't think that's uh, even such a good idea. Um, I'm probably gonna say that's gonna be even lower than that. Because I'm pretty much like uh, I'm pretty much stronger when it comes to writing with just my right hand. All right, all right. So you say lower. All right. Yeah. And the actual number of people that say they do wish they could write with both hands is. 69. It oh, is. Nice. Oh, the worst time for a number to show well, up. Yeah. But in this case, it's in your favor there, Eric. All right. Mm -hmm. here's, here's the situation, sir. You've got a two. You need all four cards to uh, tie up the match. Brody has a seven. He only needs two cards to win the game in the match. So the option's yours. Would you like to play it or pass it? In the words of the late great Jim Perry, I'm going quite of a quandary here. And I don't have a good base card, but I need four cards to win. Brody's got a middle of a road card. Needs two cards. I'm going to have to pass it to Brody. I'm going gonna to pass it to Brody. All right, Brody's on you, sir. You must call it from the seven. Call both cards right. You advance on to the semifinals. All right. I'm going to go higher than the seven. All right, going on higher than the seven. Oh no, it's another seven. Eric ties it up. All right, it is one game apiece here. I mean, we go down to sudden death now. Three cards for each player. Only one question will determine who's going to get control of the card. So let's go ahead and set that up now. All good. All right, it is going to be a go down to the winner on this one. And the question, of course, goes to our champion in this round here. Eric, Good luck, you. we asked 100 people, do you remember the last thing that you ate? How many of 100 people said yes, they do remember the last thing that they ate? I think that's very, very important sometimes. It's not because well, what happens if you get sick or the next day or something like that. And that could be very, very important. But I believe a lot of people could remember what they ate last um, they remember what they eat last. So I think it's going to be a pretty high number. 70. 70 out of 100 said they remember the last thing they ate. Brody, higher or lower than 70? <clears throat> well, I guess uh, when uh, if you remember something that you ate, uh, like, uh, Eric has a good, uh, good, uh, uh, you know, has a good point. 
because uh, what if you, uh, what happened? What happens if you ate something and you get and you get sick? You have to you have to remember what you, what you ate uh, that made you sick. I think I think that's gonna be uh, a bit lower than that because I'm not sure if there's gonna be a lot of people who actually would remember what they ate. All right, we'll see if the answer is lower there. All right, the actual number of people that said they do remember the last thing that they ate is. 81, it is not lower. Oh. All right, Eric, that means all port control is yours on this one. I'm going to turn over each of your base cards, and then you will have the option to decide who is going to be playing the cards. Your base card, Eric, is an 8. Brody's base card, a 7. Ooh. You both need two okay, cards. Guys. You have the option to change yours if you want to play it. I'm passing it to Brody. Uh, right, Brody, it's on you with the seven. You call both cards right. You move on. The tournament of champions, miss it, and Eric moves on the semifinal round. All right. I've never been to the semifinals before. I'm gonna say higher. Going on higher than the seven. Oh no! It's another seven, and Eric wins the game. And it's an all right. Congratulations to you, Eric. Another 250 for you. Moves you up to 22,150. You move on to the semifinal round. But Brody, we're not quite done with you yet. You still leave us here with another 250 here on 7,450 dollars in cash. And but in just a moment, you're going to have a chance to play the money cards to see if you can add you some more cash before you exit the uh, for the tournament. All right. All right. So, congratulations to you, Eric. You will be advancing on to the semifinals. You'll be playing the you'll be playing the winners of our one eight matchup on uh, from that game. We'll see who that's going to be in a little bit. But for right now, folks, we're going to go ahead and take a commercial break. When we come back, we're just going to give you a shot to play the money cards. We'll do that right after this. Stay with us. Welcome back to Card Sharks here with our runner up here, Brody here. Of course, he did not, not be advancing on in the tournament of the game, but we're going to give Brody another chance to see if he can add some more money to his winnings. Now, as I said before, Brody, for just making it in to the quarterfinals, you are awarded a bonus $5,000. So that already brings your total up to $12,450 for your best run. Let's see if we can add another 32000 to it right here in the money cards. You ready to play? Ready. Yeah, you know how this works. Work your way across the bottom row there. With, start with $200. Minimum bet's $50. And until you get to the second row, we'll give you additional $400 of betting money. Work your way across those. Do you get to the big bet at the top of the board where you must bet at least half your money? And again, a perfect double, double, double all the way to the top will net you $32,000 in cash. All right? All Let's right. see if you can do it here. So good luck to you. Good luck to me. Let's get up those cards. And there's your $200. And we will get you started with your base card, sir. Which is going to be a 7. You got a 7, buddy. Brody. All right. Seven with number two. All right. Changing with number two. All right. That seven now becomes an ace. Ooh. All right. Where was that in the game? All uh, of it lower. All right. $200. Lower than the ace. It's a five. You're up to 400 Okay. Yeah. I'm going to do 150 higher. All right. $150. Higher than the five. It's a jack. Up to five fifty. Nice job. Let's see. I'm gonna go let's see. Two fifty lower. Alright, two hundred and fifty dollars. Lower than the jack. Oh no, it's a queen. Losing That's okay. Down to three hundred, but we move that queen up to the next row, give me an additional four hundred dollars. Up to seven hundred bucks now, Brody, and a queen. 
All right, I'm gonna go six fifty lower. Big bet on a queen here, six hundred fifty dollars lower than the queen. It's a six after thirteen fifty. Let's change that six with number one. All right, change it with number one now. That six now becomes a seven. Ah, uh, okay. Let's do three hundred and fifty higher. All right, going three hundred and fifty dollars higher than that seven. Oh no, it's another six. Back okay. down to a thousand dollars, sir. Okay, let's try try half of it higher. All right, five hundred bucks. Trying to get some money before the big bet. Higher than the six. It's a queen. Good job. $1,500 as we move the queen up. It is now big bet time for you, sir. You must bet at least $750 on this one. Okay. You know what? Go big or go home. All of it lower. All right. Either nothing at all or $3,000. Want to see you walk away a winner here. $1,500. Lower than the queen. It's a six. He's done it. Nicely done, sir. Three thousand dollars more added to your winnings. Finish, you finished with your best run of the season here, at a grand total of fifteen thousand four hundred and fifty dollars, sir. Congratulations to you. Nicely done. So Brody walks away with a nice, healthy bank account there with fifteen grand. And Eric, again, moving on to the semifinals with over $22,000 in his possession now. We'll see who Eric will play on our next episode because we're going to wrap this one up here. We're going to do one quarterfinal match per episode here. Let you guys enjoy the tournament. And hopefully in the meantime, between time, you guys have enjoyed this first part of our Tournament of Champions. Who will be our next winner to advance on the semifinals? You'll have to find out next time here on Card Sharks. In the meantime, between time, if you like the series, please click that like button down below, share with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you want to see more of these great game shows, click that subscribe button down below and ring the bell. That way you never miss out on all the fun and games right here at MVG Productions and help us on our goal to 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2018. But in the meantime, between time, thank you so much for watching. I'm your host, Brandon Scruggs. Until we see you in our next quarterfinal matchup here in the Tournament of Champions of Card Sharks, we take care. I'll see you then. Bye for now, folks.